Last week, I did a video about the top five elemental heroes in Yu-Gi-Oh! And overall, you guys seem to really enjoy it. There were some confused comments about why Solid Soldier was not on that list. I'll try to answer that at the beginning of this one, because in today's video, we're doing the next sort of installment, the sequel to it, top five destiny hero monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! And just like the last video, we're talking about these cards from a competitive TCG perspective. And that does matter, because in that case, something like elemental hero Solid Soldier, which did not appear in the last sort of top five list where we talked about these cards, that card didn't appear because it hasn't been seen in a lot of competitive lists. Don't get me wrong, that card is pretty good for Elemental Heroes. It might even be an above average addition, but it hasn't been played competitively that much, so it's not going to make that list full of cards that saw tournament success. In today's video, especially if you're a Duel Links player, it's going to look like a lot of cards are missing, but we're only focusing on cards that saw competitive success in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. All these cards were tournament topping cards, tournament winning cards. Some of the Destiny Hero cards released over the past couple years here are pretty good and maybe even great in Duel Links, but as far as the competitive TCG tournaments go, they just weren't played that much. So in today's video, please keep in mind, I'm only talking about Destiny Hero cards that saw tournament success in the TCG. I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself a lot here, and I am because I got so many comments on the last video about certain cards like Solid Soldier and some other cards that I just want to make it very, very clear. If the card you're suggesting is in the top five Destiny heroes never topped a tournament, it's not good enough to make this list. I think it's important for context to please note that with all the cards that I'm going to talk about, except maybe a couple of them in more modern times, these cards were specifically good because they worked with Elemental Hero Stratos and Destiny Draw. It might not seem like it these days, but Stratos and Destiny Draw were some of the most powerful starter cards like 10 years ago. So when we're looking at these cards, you have to keep in mind that even if they're not crazy powerful, the fact that they synergized with those two cards meant that they were playable in a lot of top tier strategies. At number five, we have Destiny Hero Plasma, and this card is pretty cool. This card used to see a ton of play, hasn't seen very much play recently, but it was a very good card for a very long time. This is a level eight monster, which is pretty crazy, actually the highest level of any monster we'll see on this list. It is a dark monster like most of the Destiny Heroes, and it is also a warrior. It packs 1900 attack and 600 defense, not a lot for a level eight monster, but but it makes up for that with its effect. It says cannot be normal summon or set, must be special summon from your hand by tributing three monsters. Negate the effects of face up monsters while your opponent controls them. So it's like a skill drain, a one sided skill drain though. It's very, very powerful. And then it says once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls, equip that target to this card, and you can have a maximum of one card equipped to this at a time. This card gains attack equal to half the original attack of the monster equipped to it by this effect. So you can kind of see here that even though it only has 1900 base attack points here, you can actually steal your opponent's monsters and give it more. Under most circumstances, you'll see this thing between 2,500 and 3,500 attack points. I think that's pretty average, and usually it is a formidable foe, especially in formats where your opponent doesn't have a lot of spell and traps to actually deal with this card. This card was a lot better when effect negation wasn't so easy to come by, but also it had some pretty cool combos with some cards that people used to play. Things like Scapegoat and Dandelion both summon tokens, and in the case of Scapegoat, they can't be attributed for tribute summons, and in the case of Daniel Lion, they can't be tributed for anything besides Earth Tribute Summons, but even though this card does tribute monsters, it's not a tribute summon, it is a special summon. That means if you use like Scapegoat during your opponent's end phase, and you still have a couple of the tokens left around that you don't want to use for anything else, you can summon the Plasma by tributing three of them. So it basically means that you can summon Plasma for free as long as you have one copy of Scapegoat and a couple tokens left on the field. Like all of these cards, they synergize with things like Allure of Darkness and Destiny Draw, but also this one synergizes with trade in. So any deck playing a bunch of dark monsters and level 8 monsters probably would have included a one copy at least of Destiny Hero Plasma as long as they were playing Elemental Hero Stratos. And to be completely honest, I don't think this thing is even that bad by 2019 standards. Sure, it takes three tributes, but it isn't a normal summon, it is a special summon, and it still has all of those hero synergies. The big downside here is that this thing only negates face-up monster effects that your opponent controls, so it doesn't affect anything in the graveyard or hand, which is where a lot of powerful effects activate in 2019. This card was good for a long time, and I think I wouldn't even call you crazy if you tried to play in a hero deck in 2019, but right now it's just a little bit too weak to be competitively viable. Speaking of cards that won't look that powerful to people that haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh! for more than a couple years, we have Destiny Hero Fearmonger at number 4. And I know by 2019 standards this card looks horrible, but this was a staple 2 of in pretty much every deck playing Stratos for years. It's level 4, it has a 1000 attack and a 1000 defense, and it says during your standby phase, 
if this card is in your graveyard because it was destroyed by battle and sent there since your last standby phase, target one Destiny Hero Monster in your graveyard except Fearmonger and Special Summon it. I know that effect reads a little bit weird because we don't really see a lot of effects like this, but basically you would draw it and then you would set it and then if your opponent destroyed it by battle, you got to Special Summon a Destiny Hero during your next standby phase. I know this card looks slow, I know it looks terrible by 2019 standards, believe me, this card was played in a variety of decks and it was one of those Destiny Hero Monsters that you really wanted to draw. I mean, you wanted to see this card. Revival effects like Premature Burial and Monster Reborn absolutely were around when Fearmonger was being played, but a specific revival effect for Destiny Hero Monsters that you want to revive is very, very strong by certain standards in old school Yu-Gi-Oh. While Fearmonger might not look that powerful nowadays because every deck has a million Monster Reborn effects, back in the day, having a specific Monster Reborn for a very important card that we're going to talk about later on in this video was very powerful. Number three, we have Destiny Hero Diamond Dude, and oh man, is this card interesting because this is one of the few cards that does what it does. So this is a level four monster with 1400 attack and 1600 defense, and it says once per turn, you can activate the top card of your deck. Obviously, this is a newer text, but it did the same thing back in old school Yu-Gi-Oh, and it says if this is a normal spell, send it to the graveyard, otherwise place it on the bottom of your deck. During the main phase of your next turn, you can activate the effect of the spell in your graveyard, even if you no longer control this face-up card. The big key thing about Diamond Dude, it might not look that crazy on paper, but the big important piece here is that when you use Diamond Dude on a normal spell with a cost, it doesn't actually have to do that cost. For example, something like Magical Stone Excavation no longer has to discard two cards. Something like Lightning Vortex no longer has to discard one card. Something like Monster Gate no longer has to attribute a monster card. The Diamond Dude deck, the Diamond Dude Turbo deck that a lot of people played back around 2008 and even after that was a deck that very aggressively put multiple powerful normal spells in the graveyard with multiple copies of a diamond dude over just a few turns and then it would proceed to probably OTK you. There were some really crazy combos that you could do with these diamond dude turbo strategies and it was one of the more aggressive decks even back in 2008 when you had other aggressive decks like Darkham Dragon Return. Overall diamond dude and avoiding those costs is a thing that people always bring up when they talk about cards like Crystal Abundance. With Crystal Abundance, even though it wasn't the most commonly played card, you could avoid the entire cost of that and just have a free field wipe if you wanted to. Overall though, the Diamond Dude deck didn't really make its way into more modern iterations because Diamond Dude, while a very powerful card, wasn't fast enough for modern competitive tournaments. It is still a very unique card though because we don't see a lot of cards that copy the effects without copying the cost. So I mean, we sometimes see it with like Spellbook of Master, but in general, Diamond Dude is more of a relic of the past, a deck that was very powerful for many formats, but not quite good enough for modern Yu-Gi-Oh. At number two, we finally get to the card that makes Fearmonger look a lot more competitive, and that is Destiny Hero Disc Commander. This is a level one monster with 300 attack and 300 defense, and I want to make it very clear here that I'm talking about this card pre errata because the errata version is really, really bad. It hasn't been played in anything, but oh man, was this card ridiculous before its effect got changed. So the original effect on this card is very simple. It says, when this card is special summoned from the graveyard, draw two cards. So the newer version, the recent version that has an errata, has a bunch of restrictions. It's a once per duel effect, and it can't be activated during a turn this card is sent to the graveyard. But overall, the version we're focusing on here, the version that was most competitive, was the original, obviously, because it has no restrictions. So some of the ways that you could bring this card back in older school Yu-Gi-Oh! were Fearmonger, which we just talked about, but also things like Premature Burial, and Monster Reborn, and Call the Haunted, and all of these other other cards that just gave you infinite advantage by continuously reviving Disc Commander. Not to mention, back then, you sometimes wanted to tribute this card, so you'd see some crazy turns where you would Destiny draw on your first turn for Disc Commander and then set Fearmonger. Your opponent would then destroy the Fearmonger by battle, and you would start your next turn in your standby phase by bringing back Disc Commander and drawing two cards. Then you could tribute summon a monster using that Disc Commander, perhaps a Monarch monster, and then immediately revive the Disc Commander with Premature Burial or Monster Born and draw another two cards. With that little setup there, you drew two cards off of Destiny Draw, you drew four cards off of Disc Commander, and you can just keep doing that every turn. Maybe you set a Call the Haunt, and on your opponent's turn, you draw two more cards. This card was so unbelievably broken, and yes, it only triggers off a of special summon, not normal summon. That would just be insane. Destiny Hero Disc Commander is an excellent example of cards that can be fixed just by making them once per turn effects. I don't know if the once per duel effect or the other restriction put on this card with a new text was really necessary, but it is a good lesson in 
and that not making a card once per turn and having it draw two cards is probably a little bit too good for the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh TCG and when this card was playable people played this card in basically every deck and you drew so many cards so it made sense to ban this card for a very long time until Konami eventually changed the effect to basically be unplayable because any playable version of Disc Commander with its old effect would have been way too strong probably even by 2019 standards. Disc Commander should never and will never have its old effect restored but for a long time it was one of the most powerful Destiny Hero cards in the entire game. But while Disc Commander is very unfair and extremely broken pre errata post errata it hasn't really been played it hasn't really had a chance to shine in modern Yu-Gi-Oh and that means that it can't be the best Destiny Hero monster because out there out of all the Destiny Hero monsters out of all the hero monsters there's only a couple of them that really saw play in old school Yu-Gi-Oh and new school Yu-Gi-Oh and it really does fall on Destiny Hero Malicious to be the best by far Destiny Hero monster card and it goes for a couple of reasons too because if you haven't been playing the game long enough you might not know this but Destiny Hero Malicious saw play before Synchros came out and then after Synchros came out and then even up until the last couple years this card has still been seeing play it was at three copies for a brief period of time and then it was way too overpowered in many link decks featuring warrior monsters but overall Destiny Hero Malicious is by far the most ubiquitous Destiny Hero monster ever released it's a card that has seen the most play in the most formats in the most topping deck list so this is a level 6 monster with 800 attack and 800 defense not a lot of stats here but it has a very powerful effect that is not a once per turn it says you can banish this card from your graveyard especially summon one destiny hero malicious from your deck very simple and it might not seem that good because it's a level 6 monster with 800 attack and 800 defense but the amount of combos you can do with malicious is just so many it's too many to count in fact i mean way back in old school Yu-Gi-Oh, it was just good as tribute fodder and then it was very good in combination with tuner monsters when synchros first came out one of the best open openings was Destiny Draw discarding Malicious drawing into Emergency Teleport for an instant level 8 Synchro Monster without investing almost any cards. Most recently, players were able to abuse a non-once per turn nature of Malicious to turbo out a bunch of Link Monsters like Isolde, like Summon Sorceress, and plenty more that was abused in many Dark Warrior strategies. It might look like this card has a lot in common with Reborn Tengu, and maybe at the height of Reborn Tengu's popularity they did have a lot in common, but one of the main things that makes Malicious better than than Tengu, at least by modern standards, is that you never have to summon the malicious in the first place. You can just do it from the graveyard, and that's a huge advantage because, yes, summoning Reborn Tengu isn't the biggest hassle, but it is something that you have to do. Where in something like malicious, you can just discard it or send it to the graveyard or special summon it from your hand. You don't actually have to get the first copy on the field, which is a huge advantage. Not to mention that being a dark monster and a warrior monster and a destiny hero gives you tons of support that other cards like Reborn Tengu just don't have. Have. Anyway, though, it's about going to wrap up today's discussion video on the top five Destiny Hero monsters in competitive Yu Gi Oh! I'm not really sure if there's a new way to do this video. I mean, I've looked into the Vision Heroes and the Masked Heroes and the Evil Heroes, but I'm not sure if there's enough of those cards to actually make a top five list of ones that have seen consistent competitive use. Obviously, there are some standout cards like Vision Hero Vion and Masked Hero Dark Law, but overall, there aren't that many of those cards that really fall into the competitive category. Maybe I can do a video that's like the top five hero monsters that aren't elemental heroes or destiny heroes but i haven't really come up with an idea yet let me know in the comment section below if you guys have an idea of how i can review some of the more competitive hero cards that maybe don't fall under the category of these first two videos i'll see you later though thanks so much for watching goodbye